guys, it's Johnny Hunkins at Popular Hot Riding Magazine, and today we're looking at a Ford Racing Z351 alloy block. It is a Windsor block, and it's not your ordinary small block Ford. This is what you would use for a all-out stroker motor or high horsepower racing or street engine where the stock style block would be inadequate. Now, Ford small blocks, the Windsors, like we have over here, are notoriously weak in several areas. Uh, obviously, down the middle where the cam journals are, they tend to crack. They also have very large main bearings on a 351, very small main bearings on a 302, and um, they're not particularly strong for their weight. This alloy block, this Z351 Ford Racing block, is extremely lightweight and it's going to be the basis for a very high output stroker motor that we're going to be building in the pages of Popular Hot Riding over the next several months. We haven't figured out exactly the size of motor that we're going to be building, but it's going to be somewhere in the 430 to 450 cubic inch range. So we're going to just take a look around this block and she show you some of the great features and advantages that this Ford Racing block has over the production block. Right off the bat, the Z351 block has a tremendous weight advantage over a production 351 block. This thing weighs only about 133 pounds, and that's in contrast to about 180 pounds for a production 351 block. Now, if you're going to go with a high performance 351 block in an iron configuration that number can soar all the way up to about 280 pounds so really for an engine at the horsepower level that we're going to build we're actually looking at a weight advantage of about 150 pounds using the alloy block and you know that is going to make a huge difference in a, in a handling car like we're going to be putting this into now small block Fords, 302s and 351s, are known to have a particularly weak area in the lifter valley. And what happens is that under heavy cylinder load, the block will split right down the center, right above the cam journals. And uh, that's unfortunately happened to me personally in a car that was going low tens. And at the time, we didn't have the option of putting the uh, Z351 block in, so we would just put a new block in and, and keep going. Now you'll notice that the uh, aluminum block has these ribs right here between the banks so that when those high stresses uh, are encountered the block, the integrity of the block is, uh, is maintained. So well worth it when you're in the 800-900 horsepower range. Now on Windsor engines the thickness of the cylinder walls is not really a problem. It, it's never really presented itself as a, as a weakness point. But one of the things that you do encounter with small block Fords is that you've only got four bolts per, per cylinder here. And so they tend to experience a pretty high clamping load. And when you're under really high uh, output situations, the dimensional integrity can kind of go away. You can kind of get some twisting and some torquing and some flexing there. Now the Z351 block does have added material here in the cylinder walls and that just keeps everything dimensionally stable when you're making a lot of horsepower. What that means is that you're going to have a whole lot less problem with sealing integrity and leakage and that sort of thing in the long haul. It's going to basically stay in the right shape when your foot's all the way to the wood. Now we're going to look at something really cool on the front here. Normally the Windsor engine has a priority oiling to the lifters and on the Z351 block you'll notice here that there's an added port right there right next to the the cam journal and what that does is will allow you to feed priority oiling to the mains first then to the camshaft and you know Windsors have always traditionally had uh, a weakness in the main area, the, the main journals. We're going to talk a little bit about main journals here in a second, but 
for, for those guys who are going to go out on a road course or a drag strip, having the peace of mind that the oil is going to the mains first is going to mean that they can not worry about whether the engine's going to come apart when the foot goes all the way down. Well, this production 351 block has been treated to a main girdle here to strengthen it. Otherwise, it would experience a lot of uh, dimensional instability. And you would have some cracking in the, in the mains. But what I want to point out to you is the main journal diameter in this is a 3-inch diameter. And that's not terribly uh, good to have when your engine speeds are going to be exceeding 7,000 RPM. Now, the Z351 block does what a lot of performance 351 blocks do and that is increase the main journal size from a two and a quarter on a 302 up to a two and three quarters inch or down from three inch from a 351 so it's actually the right compromise between strength and bearing speed the four bolt splayed main caps on the Z351 block are made of billet steel and this thing is beefy there's no way that these caps are going to move around or vibrate or twist or break and actually you can see what is a very common fix on 351 blocks this girdle right here is designed to tie these main caps together so that they're leaning on each other for strength now obviously that's a lot of extra complexity that's a lot of extra weight and you know you also have to perform machining operations to prepare that specially with 351 Z block no such problem there you've got all the beefcake where you want it right from the factory this is production freeze plug what a lot of guys forget about is that these are designed to pop out imagine that your block gets cold, starts freezing in the middle of winter, and the freeze plug just comes out, saves your block. Well, that's not what you want to happen when you are racing your motorsport block here. So, what the folks at Ford Racing have done is make their Z351 block with a screw-in freeze plug and an O-ring gasket that fits right there. Boy, that sure makes it really easy to drain this block when you're swapping engines or swapping cams on the dyno. It can just save you all kinds of time and trouble, and it looks a lot better, too. Might seem like a small detail, but the Z351 block also has the late model one-piece rear main seal. Now, on 302s, the two-piece seal went away when the roller cam came in in the mid to late 80s. But on the 351, that really didn't happen until the early to mid 90s. This, of course, is an earlier 351 block, and that has a two piece seal. Uh, the advantage is that no leaks. You know, if you're building a really nice engine, uh, it's going into a race car or a really nice street car, you've got a nice paint job, and you're just showing it out at the show, you don't want uh, little oil leaks to pop up. So that's a nice advantage there that they've thought of to update that. The pan rails on a 351 are not very beefy. You can see that there's actually a recess underneath there and there's not a lot of strength in the bottom of this block. Of course we see what we had to do on this one here is put this uh, main support girdle here. Now on the Z351 you can see lots and lots of beefcake there. This sucker is not going anywhere. There's a lot of strength around the pan rail and that's just integrated in the block. Hard to believe how strong this thing is and how light it is at the same time. So, you know, this thing is built to go the distance and it's strong. Surprisingly, the Z351 block is remarkably affordable. It's about $3,500 through Summit Racing. Um, so, you know, just a few more bucks more than a really high-end uh, cast iron block. Um, of course, you may be wondering why we need this, because not every Ford small block engine build needs a, a beefy aluminum block. The reason is because we're going to be building about 750 to 800 horsepower with 
uh, these trick flow high port 240 CNC heads. So we're in the process of specking out the solid roller cam and we're going to be using that with a trick flow single plane intake manifold. But yeah, 750 horsepower minimum from about 450 cubic inches. So you can see now why we need something like this. We basically want our cake and eat it. We want to have a very strong engine that makes a lot of power and we don't want to pay a weight penalty for it when we stick it into our Mustang. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing a couple more stories on the rotating assembly, the build up, the induction, and finally the dyno test on this wonderful small block. Stay tuned. <laughs>